That's how it comes. They have when you have knowledge of something, you're knowing it, which turns to understanding. You begin to comprehend it, mm -hmm. you know. And then when you're really applying it, that's where it's all wisdom right there. When you learn to apply it in your life. All right. Yeah, Father, we just honor you. We thank you this day. We thank you for your presence, because where your spirit is. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom, Father God. And we thank you for you having free reign in this place. As we thank you where we know two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in our midst. And we just honor you and adore you, Father God. We thank you for your word this day, Lord. Teach us, Father God. Give us understanding. Open our eyes, Father God, to hear your word, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord, we thank you and praise you. We bind the hand of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father God, for your people are loose. They're free, Lord. That, Father, we thank you for the peace of you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, to rule and reign in this place. And we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, because he's the one that convicts. He's the one that counsels. He's the one, Father God, that teaches us all things, bring things to our remembrance. And we give you praise and honor and glory for whatever gifts or manifestations of your Holy Spirit. We always give you the praise, glory, and honor for it all, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to finish. Everyone remember where we started, what we were talking about last Sunday? I do, but I'm asking you all. <laughs> Talking about walking in. Yeah, walking in wisdom. Amen. So, praise God. We were talking about the two things as far as the two, first the two, which was demonic wisdom, where we saw how the Antichrist will be and wh where it's coming from. Because it said in James 3 about, you know, this wisdom's not from above, but it's earthly, sen demonic, and sensual. That's what kind it was. And then we're talking about human wisdom, which I was kind of finishing up. Because human wisdom is actually, it's actually the wisdom not from God, but it, 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 it's a limited wisdom where it's actually, it's limited wisdom in, in what you can know but it's it only exceeds so far you know it's more dealing with intellect and logic than it is dealing with the counsel of god the wisdom so it's man's understanding of man's things you know having earthly things that's what it is so without god but we're going to talk about the we'll, we'll just look a few more scriptures and let's go here just to show you real quick. We'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If I, oh, you got, the, you got the... Yeah, for those who have the Bible and those who have it on the phone. I'm almost forget. So used to the Bible. <laughs> but it's good to know the book, amen? Because if technology ever was to just fail... Then you go back to the paper book. We'll be like in Zambia. Everything's still on paper file. That's right. Yeah, it's back in the ancient time. It's still the ancient but, you know. Nice yeah. Changed yeah. But here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says here, verse 12, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. That's actually anti-spirit it's talking about something against God but we're talking about also wisdom the wisdom of the world it says but the spirit which is of God that we might know what the things that are freely given unto us of God that sounds good everyone wants something free well if you want something free Jesus said God already has given it to us all we got to do he paid the price for us amen so we're, we don't have to give him physical money to buy from him because he doesn't want that. We just, he says, buy of me in Revelation chapter 3. He says, buy of me of gold tried in fire. Amen. It's not some natural gold, but he's talking about the faith where it'll be tried and tested by fire. Amen. Where you go through trials and things, but that your faith can be put in trust in God rather than ourselves. Amen. So it says here, Hallelujah. The things that knoweth 
where am I? 12. But they are freely given to us of God. Verse 13, which things also we speak. That's the wisdom of God. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah. we're not doing teaching things that are limited without understanding of God. We're teaching things that are actually can be unlimited source that are with understanding of what God's plan, purpose, and what his as far as uh, what he has for your life. Amen. So it says right here, but which the Holy Ghost teaches comparing what? Spiritual things with spiritual. He's not comparing natural things with natural. That's a natural minded man. That's, that's a man who isn't saved. That's a man whose wisdom is limited because it's of the earth, of the world. Amen. They think they know, but they don't know. That's why it says right here in verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why is that? I'm glad you asked. It says, For they are foolishness unto him. So it says a fool in Psalms says in his heart there is no God. So his wisdom is like, no, there's not God. It's, it's Darwinism. It's the Big Bangs. We, we, somehow it was evolution, but we stopped evolving. Mm. That's limited knowledge. How, how is all saying we came from monkeys, but the monkeys today aren't even still turning into people? <laughs> if that's the case, the monkeys should be having children, and then the children should be turning into the humans mm. by this time. Why would it stop? Mm. What happened that it had to stop? But see, it takes more... It takes more thinking thoroughly to figure things out with man's wisdom to try to explain things away of God. It takes more work, takes more trying than it is just to take God's word for what he says and believe in how he made it. It makes it more simple because God's yoke is easy. It's simple and his burden's light. It's not, it's not heavy. His work isn't complicated. It's a simplicity of the gospel of Christ. Amen? You know, but science, science can prove there is a God. But see, when they do it wrong, they're always trying to keep what they believe, but it keeps changing. Even the carbon theory, it was proven wrong. You know, they test things that say it was thousands and thousands or millions of years. But then you take another fossil, it looks the same as that, and that thing just died, uh, what, a uh, hundred years ago? So it, it, the whole thing is that that's man's, man's wisdom's trying to work with things that have been under the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. And so when the curse of the law happened, and then we had the flood and all that, that changed a lot of things. And the earth splitted in the days of Peleg. So a lot of things changed you know, to what we have today. So they're working off of a lot of things, which makes things harder to try to keep their theory. That's what it is. But God's way, it's so, he makes things simple. So he says, their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. You need the Spirit of God. It says no man can know the Son, but the Father and no man can know the Father but the Son, and to whom he reveals him, has revelation. His, his spirit opens his eyes to understand. Because this isn't a natural book. It wasn't written by natural man. It was written by men who were led or moved by the Spirit of God, holy men of God, as they were inspired by God to write the words. These are God's words, breathe and living. It's not just a natural book I'm reading to figure out, yeah, how does man's spirit, how does man work? You know, natural way. No, -uh, this is God and it's ever this is so living that when you read it, it's something you can see new all the time. And just going through it, if we were to just go through a history lesson to see how many men wrote the book over all these thousands of years and they all go and sync together, that's almost impossible unless it's God. Because you can't even get anyone else's book throughout history that can take it and everything is all going in sequence and it all backs up prophetically. It, it's things that told you what, because history is God's, His story. That's what it is. God's telling His story. 
about our life and well of him and what we're to learn and know of him. All the people, if you go back even when America was just coming to know, the people who were scientists, who were judges, who were attorneys, who were like politicians, I mean, they were, and the, they used to use the Bible to learn the ABCs. You could check back history. That was what they had in schools till 1960-something. They took it out. And then when they took the Bible out of the schools from learning, everything you can look. Just look at the date when they took the Bible out of school in America in 1960, I think it was 67 or something like that, and look at the increase of everything. You look at the increase of violence, you look at the increase of uh, single motherhood. You look at the increase of everything, murder, all that. You look at it, you could see it keeps elevating. Because when you take, the devil wants to take the wisdom of God out of school so he can get to the youth mm -hmm. from them not knowing God. Mm -hmm. You know, if you could get to the youth, he's looking at the generations to come. But God's about to hit the youth now. And you see, it wasn't getting better for them. You see it more getting as time, music, the movies, and everything. You see how things come. Well, those are generations after generations who were taught in that. Yale used to be a school, of, a Christian school. Pr Princeton was. Now they're like atheists because they didn't want God. They act like they don't even know their own history. So just to give you a little thing about that. So it says right here, for they are spiritually discerned. And so even chapter 3, if we go here, chapter 3, verse right here, 18. Watch what this says. Let no man deceive you or trick you. If any man among you seemeth to be wise, let him what? Seemeth to be wise in this world. Let him become a fool that he may be wise. What? For Christ. Amen? That's why Paul said the things that I counted, what? As far as counted for him, righteousness, he counted as dung. The things that he was chasing, that he might win Christ. Because all the wisdom he knew of the world, he counted that as nothing. As like dung, he said, that he may grab a hold of Christ. And he knew a lot. He taught a lot. I mean, sometimes that's why God says here, verse 19, for the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God. And for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. He said, Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Amen? It talking about with the, with the Lord, because He's freely given us all things when we come to know Him. He made all things. So our promises in God are yes and amen for all things He's given us. He's going to create a new heaven, a new earth. He's giving you a new home. I mean, you could have things here on earth, but wait till you get to heaven too and see what you got. You got a mansion He already prepared in heaven waiting for you. Amen? I mean, here on earth, it's going to be nothing compared, but God wants you to be blessed here on earth. He'll give you the desires of your heart. That's God's desire, is to give you desires of your heart. You just learn to trust in Him. It, it, well, to me, with God, material things isn't nothing to God. What does it mean? He has gold, His streets made of gold. He got pearl gates. Pearls, I mean, huge pearls. I mean, I'm saying so people think, oh, you know, people got to be broke, beat down, disgusted. It's having a balance. It's not so caught up on worldly things that that's all you want to obtain from God. When you love God, it isn't all about that. But God doesn't mind you having things as long as things don't have you. Amen? If you do get things from God, you can tell and testify to people, man, this is what the Lord blessed me with. I've been believing God for this, and He gave me this. Amen? And you know it's from Him. Amen? Because every good gift and perfect gift from God, from the Father of lights, who's there is no turning. Amen? And He'll give you the desires of your heart that He's already had for you before you were born. Amen? He has. He knows... I don't know everything. I, there's certain desires he puts in my heart. I don't know everything, but he knows everything. He's greater than our heart, he says in 1 John, and knoweth all things. So he knows everything in my heart that 
I did really desire to have the right person. He knows the right things. He knows all that. But if we just abide in him, we'll learn to walk in him. Those things he don't mind giving us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it's not just getting caught up because he wants your whole life blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Blessed means one to be envied after. Mm -hmm. Like people be like, wow, man. Like people envy those people who are on TV and see them. And like, oh, I want what they have. Well, that's covetousness. But God will give you things where people be like, man, I, I, they looking at you. How would you get that? Where How would you go there and stuff? And God wants to do that. But the main thing they really want is what you have in your heart. Amen? Because I could testify... Man, where I used to be a long time ago, those people were asking me, they couldn't understand in their natural mind, how can you be so at peace when where we're at, we're watching you and we're not even at peace ourselves and you're always smiling. And I tell them it's Jesus because see, this world can't give you peace. The Lord said in the world, you'll have tribulation. He said, the peace I give you, no man give it to you. But the peace he'll give passes man's understanding. Amen. And, and that's something you can't buy with money. That's just something you can believe for God. Amen. And he'll give it to you. So here we'll talk about uh, godly wisdom. I got a lot to cover, a lot of things I want to cover with this. I've been kind of excited about this. But uh, godly wisdom, we'll see, because this is dealing with your unlimited resource of walking and knowing God. Amen. And to receive the benefits you ha have from God here on earth. Amen. But it, 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 wisdom in its whole, it, it comes with knowing and understanding and then applying. And we'll see that. But let's look at something first before we start in there. Godly wisdom, if we just go, we all of us mo mostly know this. But let's go here in uh, Luke chapter 6. I want you to see something. Luke chapter 8, I'm sorry, verse, did I say 6? I was going to go to Matthews, but I want to go here. Hold on. All right, let me see. Yeah, Luke chapter 6. It's a very short one, verse 47. Uh, I'll start at verse 43, amen? Amen. It says, for a good tree bringeth forth not corrupt fruit. Neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by what? His own fruit. Amen. That's why we be in fruit inspectors. Amen. So it says right here, For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasures, that's wisdom, of his heart bringeth forth what? Good. Amen. He's going to speak good things. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says right here, And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the, for of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see really what's in a person's heart, watch what comes out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Some people will talk through their mind. But really, in the heart is the root of things. And really, what, where you know what's in the heart, like me, I have a lot of pressure going on today. So I, I got to watch over my words as the things come because you see what you're saying. Amen? Mm -hmm. you, you're your own fruit inspector. So if you want to change the fruit that's come, that you're getting, watch what you're eating. Mm -hmm. Amen? That means what you're listening to. Amen? Mm -hmm. The word says, taste and see how good the Lord is. That means taste is to know, see, is to understand how good the Lord is. Amen? So if you hear, if faith come by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, so there's other ways to hear other things, and that can also bring wrong fruit. Amen? So it says right here in verse 46, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things what well, which I say? So he said, verse 47, Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, See, this is what he said. I will show you to whom he is like. And the, actually the other, I, I, I'll say this, because the, the, in Matthew's chapter 7, it says about the same parable. But he talks about a wise man that hears the word and doeth them. And then he talks about a foolish man that hears them, but he doesn't do them. So that's the wisdom of the world, and that's the wisdom of God. So it says... 
<clears throat> the wise man built a house and what did he do? He dig deep. So that was a person that what? When, when a, if you want a strong foundation, <clears throat> what do you do? Building a natural house, you got to dig deep to lay the foundation so the house don't fall away, you know, break apart. So they build a foundation real deep before they go ahead and start building the house to make sure the house is able to be stable enough to handle it. Amen? So it's all really on the foundation. That's what it is. Just like your own foundation, if you never learn ABCs, one, two, threes, or any of that, man, you'd be like... Sound like one of those guys. <laughs> the, no, I mean, whew, no, you, you need that to build a foundation on how to read, how to, you know, do mathematics. So that helps you, you know, to learn some things unless you just learn by hearing and then you don't know how to read or write. Which some people I've heard, they, they've testified, they're just business people, but it's, you know, it takes a different way of learning how to get through life, you know, with that. Mm -hmm. So it says right here, he dig deep and he laid a foundation on what? A rock. Because a rock's made by God. It's hard to, you can't, it's hard to break those. But, and it's bigger than the prudential rock, or the rock of Gibraltar. So it said, when the floods arose, the streams beat vehemently on it. What? on the house and it could not shake it for it was what founded on a rock so the rock represents jesus right but he that heareth and doeth it not is like the man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth sand so that's matthew says sand Whew, that's not good mm -hmm. uh, even a even a builder knows that that's why they go to school get a license you start building upon a sand watch what happens after a while, especially here in Florida, your your house will be going with the wind. You're talking about gone with the wind, the movie, that your house will be gone with the wind. <laughs> when a hurricane goes, it's gone. You're going to see it. It says, and against what? Against which the streams did beat vehemently and immediately. It didn't take long. Immediately it fell. Mm -hmm. So that, and the ruin of the house was great. So that's what's dealing with one that's wise and one that's foolish. Because if you just go to Matthew, I'll just give you what it says here. We're not going to read from here. But Matthew's 7, 24 through 27, it speaks almost the same way. But it's just talking about he didn't dig deep. He just laid a foundation. But he, will, he that heard the words and did them is wise. So that's what we're talking about the wisdom of God versus the wisdom of the world because that's foolishness. Amen. So right here it says, and we're we going to look at a, a few examples about godly wisdom. In Ephesians 1, we'll see, because he tells us this prayer, uh, verse 17. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom. And what? Revelation. That's a revealing, an unveiling of what? In the knowledge of Him. So you knowing Him. Amen? That's how it comes. They have, when you have knowledge of something, you're knowing it, which turns to understanding. You begin to comprehend it. You know, and then when you're really applying it, that's where it's all wisdom right there. When you learn to apply it in your life, you know. So he says right here, and what does he say? The knowledge of him, verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or illuminated. So where your lights are turned on in your house, you know? You're not walking in darkness, amen? Who wants to go in a house with no power, no light? You know, be like, man, I'm talking to people. Sometimes I wonder, man, the lights are out in there. We need to hook you up and get this power company turned on up in this house in your life. You need to get filled with the Holy Spirit because the lights are out up in there, 
You haven't paid your power bill. <laughs> no, no, I'm just don't. The light's been turned off. Haven't you heard there's an electric company? It's called the Holy Spirit. He wants to come in your life. All you got to do is make Jesus the landlord of your life, and then he could turn the power on so you could be able to see again. Amen? So that, that, that's what it is. And that what? You, you may know what is the hope, the expectation, the earnest expectation, the hope of his calling. Right? So it's calling for what? Your life. That's what he wants. Because when your lights are out, people are always going to school and stuff, wondering what their purpose is, what they want to do. You know, what, why are they here? Well, it wasn't just to watch TV and play video games. No, -uh, it was actually to have purpose. Amen? It's not just to make a bunch of money, because money isn't purpose. Purpose... Money comes with purpose if you have it because now you're responsible in how you use it. But if you have no purpose with money, then you just spend it on whatever. You just, there's no goal. There's nothing to obtain. So, you know, it's one thing. Yeah, you use it on your things. But if you have a goal intended, then you have somewhere to aim your money. You know, money is just a tool. And we talked about that before. Money can buy a clock, but it can't buy you time. Amen? Amen? It can buy you insurance. It can't buy you health. Amen? It can buy you the things that the things that you want to obtain, you can't get with money. Amen? So the things you really can get is only really from God what He gives you. Health, life, breath, all things of those. He can give you time too. Amen? We look at Hezekiah, he cried out to the Lord because he was going to die. And he told him, get his house in order, Isaiah. And then he turned his head to the wall and cried to the Lord. And he said, forgive me. And he repented. And then the Isaiah was walking out of the, the castle or, you know, the temple. And as he's in the court walking out, he said what he, the Lord told him to say. Then the Lord spoke to him again. He just wasn't even out yet. He's driving, you know, walking. But he told him, turn around, go back there. And told, tell Hezekiah, I, I heard your prayers, and I've seen your tears, and I'm going to add on to you 15 more years. You like that rhyme? But that's what it says. No, I'm just saying, that's what it says in the Word. It, it's a song about that. I always remember, but the, that's, it, it rhymes. But no, he added on to him 15 more years. Kings say, amen? So 15, he gave him 15 more years so he can add time to a person's life because his desire is to be us in Psalms 91, to be satisfied with long life that we may have see many days, amen? amen. And, and, and there is a thing to that while I'm on there. Let's go over here to 1 Peter. I'll show you. Amen. Watch this. What, why I'm here. In First Peter, chapter, chapter uh, three, and this is this goes with James, where we we're talking on chapter three. Who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out a good conversation, his works with meekness, with humility. You know, his lifestyle, his conversation, his conduct. Let a wise man show out of his conduct, his good deeds, you know, of his life, his conduct or his conversation, how he does. And for this wisdoms of God. Amen. So he says, how's one of the ways he says right here in verse 10 or. For he that will love life. Some people, they hate life because they haven't tasted what's good in life but if they see how good the lord is they're going to love life amen they'll, they'll really love what god has in store for them but some people it's a curse under the law for those who hate life because they said i can't wait under deuteronomy 28 under the curse they're like i can't wait till this day's over and when the morning when the night comes they can't stay when the morning comes they can't you know they're talking about how they can't stand when the day is about to come or when the night goes because they're just tired of life they hate it you know they they got nothing as far as what to live for because they're not living for the lord amen so living for this life is empty you know, you try to fill your life, but it's really you're filling it with empty things because it, the things that you fill with don't can't give you life. Amen. They can try to add to it 
and that adds problems and adds other things, but it can give real life to you. Amen? Yeah, joy and happiness. It, it could be temporarily, but not the life the Lord has in store. So it says right here, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from what? Evil. That's how the bonds of the heart, the mouth speaks. And let, him, let his lips that they speak no guile. That's a person with wisdom. Let him in shoe shun evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it or go after peace. Who's that? Jesus. It says, thou shalt be in perfect peace, you know, whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in him. It says, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, those who trust in him. That's what he's saying. And his ears are open unto their prayers. But what? His face is of the Lord is against them that, what? Do evil. So that's what he's saying, meaning they're wrong, doing their own thing as far as they're going their own way. So here we're, we're going with godly wisdom. So let's go here to Luke 21. Why don't you see something? I think that's where I want to be. Get this in order. We're going to see uh, some examples of godly wisdom. Amen. But Luke 21... Where am I? All right. Man, this is good. Praise God. So, so the Lord says right here, uh, I'm all, it, this is referring to the times that come, right? When you got godly wisdom, you might come against things, right? I mean, there might be situations that arise in your life, but God will give you wisdom. Like I was praying, I was talking about, I just got that radio. So I was all discombobulated that day because I thought, man, it would be an easy fix. I could just go and throw it in. I took the whole radio out of the car, took everything out. Then I looked at the wires. I was like, you got to be kidding me. None of this working together. I don't want to cut these wires. It's about 20 wires on one another. Then I'm calling people and, I, you know, you get frustrated. You're doing your own wisdom, <laughs> leaning to your own understanding. So my day was like, oh, man. So, you know what? I, I, I went all the way over to the store, talked to the guy. He told me this is things I need. And I was like, okay. And I was like, you know what? I don't even feel like going through all this. Just rather pay the guy and just do it. So the next morning, I repented. I told the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry putting this stuff. But it was at my heart because my desire was like to do this. And so I'm praying like I do in the morning. I'm just praying in spirit, laying in the bed. And as I'm praying in the spirit, all of a sudden, the Lord just starts downloading me in how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I saw what to do and everything. So I was like, cool, I know what to do now. I'm not even going to pay them. I'm just going to get the parts and do it myself because he already showed me what to do before I even need to take it there. And it gave me peace. Mm -hmm. See, and I have, I've had it before done where I didn't know how to paint. And while we were on our way to a job, it took an hour to get there. I just, I say yes, because I was going by faith. I didn't even know what I was going to do. So I'm just praying. It takes an hour. So I just pray while we're on the van. I'm just praying quietly to myself, just praying in the spirit. And then he starts showing me on how to paint and where to start and everything. I was like, praise God. Thank you, Lord, for this wisdom, because I, I didn't know nothing. I don't know what to do or how. I don't even have even painted before. So he just downloaded it to me and show me where I can understand. He, he'll show you in the way you understand and how to do something. But you gotta give him that time. You know, it's wisdom that he'll give you, amen? And so God, God will give you, he'll download that wisdom if you just seek him about it, amen? Because that's what he wants to do, give you wisdom in how to handle situations and how to do things, amen? Where we on our own self, are like troubled. We're trying to always figure it out. We get frustrated, gets angry, and then we're all our days like, oh, and all we got to do is just say, Lord, take a little time, take a break, 
say, Lord, I, I'm going to pray. Lord, just give me the wisdom and how to handle this situation or whatever it is. And God will. So he says here in verse 12, But before all these things, they shall lay hands on you. This is when they were going to be persecuted and delivering you up to synagogues and to prisons, being brought before the kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Now, this is some fast wisdom you need. So he said, Settle it therefore not in, in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all of your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So in another words, he'll give us wisdom in how to speak things and what to say to things if it's that kind of situation going on. Amen? That he said even your adversaries will not be able to resist. They don't know what to do. And one of them, I mean, Stephen, if we go to the book of Acts chapter 7, and we don't have to go there for time's sake because I got a lot more to cover, but that was one of the cases he, he, before he was stoned, he preached to them. They were asking him, and when you look at it, he was one of the seven that was filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. And so when he got to talking to the Pharisees, they were just storming. He started telling them all the way from Abraham to Moses, all the way down to when Jesus came. After they heard it, they couldn't take it no more because what he was speaking was the truth. I mean, the only thing they could do was stop their ears and they started picking stones and stoning them. And he saw the Lord and he went to heaven. He was like, praise the Lord. Lord, I forgive them. He looked up. But I'm saying they had nothing. They couldn't say anything. The only thing they could do was stone them. Because what he gave was wisdom that was telling them everything about what the Lord had all through history about their, you know, what he did for them and the children, how they persecuted and they wrote, hung Jesus, you know, crucified him and everything. But they couldn't, they couldn't even go against what he said. The only thing they could do is just stone him. So, but we'll see how to handle matters right, too. Okay. I'll, I'll show you something here with wisdom, godly wisdom. Go here to Daniel. Check this out. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 2. I want you to see this. This is when uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he had a dream, and he was troubled about it. And I don't read the whole thing for time's sake. And then uh, he asked his people, the wise men that he had, astrologers and sorcerers, to ask them uh, to tell him his dream. And they were like, tell you your dream. He said, make, make known to him the dream and the interpretation. They were like, we never even heard of anyone in history to give someone a dream. We don't even know how to tell you. If he told us a dream, we can interpret. But just give, having the know what your dream was that's kind of hard so he was mad and the king said right here verse right here in verse uh eight it said the king answered and said i know of a certainty that you would gain the time because you see this thing is gone from me but if you will not make known this see this is nebuchadnezzar now god actually had him to be ruler over the earth but I'll tell you, he wasn't another one to play with either. You know, some people think, oh, they're all called a God. They're just, uh, well, he was learning. He didn't know at the time he was called a God. But when God called him, he, he was humbled. But this man didn't play games here. And <laughs> this guy was quick to kill people. So he said right here, if you will not make known the, unto me the dream, there is but one degree for you. <laughs> this is how he handled it. He wanted people to tell him his own dream, that he was troubled about it. He woke up, out of it. he didn't even remember it. But it was something bothering him about it. And so he goes, there's only one decree for you. And when a king back then said something, he has to do it or he dies. Mm -hmm. So if he made a decree, he can't back off on it because it's a rule. So if he said you died, they're killing you. There's no backing up off of anything back in this time. 
today they might say one thing do another but i'm saying even what you you see when the presidents talk they watch every word and then they try going against whatever he said isn't this what you say now it's a lot of politics but when kings ruled they said something that's it mm -hmm. that's how it went and it said right here there is but one degree for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream and I will know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. And the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. It is a rare thing that the king requireth. There is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry. Look at this. They're trying to help him say no one's even done this. This has come from a spirit. It's got to come from God's. You know, they use little G's. And he said right here that he was furious, very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. He's like, oh, since you don't want to answer it, just kill them all. I'm tired of this. Wow. That's how he handled it. He wasn't even like thinking about it. He was just angry and hot-tempered. He said, destroy them all. And so what, what happened? And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they saw Daniel and his fellows to be slain. See, Daniel was part of them. He was captivity. He was with the eunuchs that came from Israel that Nebuchadnezzar took in, and he was born in captivity there. So they don't know women. That's a eunuch. They never are with women, don't know women, and they stay a virgin their whole life because some are made eunuchs by people that they cut off so they're neutered, and they don't have women at all. So these children were here, and what happened? Daniel answered with counsel and what? Wisdom. See, he handled it in a way with counsel that was from God, and he handled it with wisdom. To what? Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. See, it only takes one person who's wise and counsel that's able to change some things. And what? He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the degree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel, and then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. And what did Daniel do? He went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. So those are Daniel, Meshach, Shemrach, and Abednego. He let them all know what was going on and what? They would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret. And Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men. So what happened? They prayed and God gave him the dream and revealed it and the interpretation of the dream to King Nebuchadnezzar. See, that's wisdom from God. That's not from man because no man can do that. Amen. Amen. So that, that, that's godly wisdom and how you handle things and how you respond to things. Amen. Amen. It, you know, he wasn't coming in there all heated up. Oh, man, what are you talking about, King? No, -uh. no, you're not doing that to Nebuchadnezzar. And another guy we, we could look at as example is also uh obviously a lot of us know that just to write it down for time's sake is uh in Genesis. If you look at the story of Joseph. How was he? He was one that also interpreted in, the, in Genesis 40 and to 47. If you look at it, he was raised up and then he went to, he was in prison and then he learned his gifts and then the, the king had a dream. And what happened? He came to give the interpretation because he interpreted a dream for two of the butler and the baker that was in there. One got hung, the other one got to go to back to his position. So two years by, passed on and then the king had a dream and the baker, butler, the baker, it was a baker or butler, <laughs> butler was there and he remembered what Joseph did and he told the king and the king went and sent for him. 
and then he told him exactly what to do about the seven years of prosperity, the seven years, because he had a dream about the fatted calves and then the virile skinny calves that were withering. And then he said, this is seven years of prosperity and seven years of famine. And he told the king what he needs to do in those seven years to lay up the food and the corn. And then after when the seven years of famine come, that he'll have stored up to, re to actually be able to keep and stay around for the seven years of famine. That's wisdom. Because some people, they'll get money and then the economy drops and they already spent everything. Well, God may give you wisdom to say, hold back. Don't go using everything up. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. My, I was working with people. They did that. They were getting all kind of money, selling, flipping homes, and then they didn't know the economy was coming that was crashing. I saw it was starting down here two years before, but they were just getting money, money, buying all this stuff. Then all of a sudden, in one day, bam, it just hit. Now everyone wants their money back. The investors are calling for it, all the houses they had, and then the cars they were buying, the boats and all that stuff. And now they were scrambling around trying to figure out what to do. You know, they, they could have saved up a lot of money rather than just, see, the more stuff you buy, when you get money, the more you got to keep going, yeah. you know, because it takes money to maintain it. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens. A lot of people get raises. They get a lot of money. Then they just go out and start buying big things rather than paying off everything. Well, those bills come unless you got cash to buy it out, you know, that kind of money. But those things take maintenance. But if you're able to store up, see, it's good to save. You know, too, like Dave, one thing, Dave Ramsey, if you look at him, he got financial institute debt thing. He says, yeah, you give your tithe to the Lord, but he also you do a 10 percent savings. So you always have something to fall back on. Amen. So if any emergency comes, you have an emergency cushion that you can fall on. That, that's wisdom. I'm just saying that you have something to sustain you just in case anything may ha happen, you know, that you got something to get you out, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So it's using wisdom. I know I've heard it some people uh, before. I was like, oh, I ain't got nothing, man. <laughs> you know, I'll just walk by faith. <laughs> got to believe the Lord to get me out of this. But when you start getting stuff, it, you just learn you p put a savings, put stuff so you have a cushion in case something ever happens. You don't know a car, something goes on, something with the house. You always have something to keep you afloat, you know? That's, right. That's using wisdom, amen? Mm -hmm. It says a good man lays up, what? For his children's children, mm -hmm. amen? Yeah. He's not just laying up for himself and then like forget all them. Like some people die and leave everyone in debt, mm -hmm. you know, to pay them out while they're dead. That's not wise. That ain't a good person. Mm -mm. They die, and instead of laying up, it says the parents are to lay up for the children, not the children, the parents. So what happened? They, they die because they spent all their stuff, and now their children's got to pay and hurry up and get a casket and everything else, you know, for them because they weren't wise to be able to have all that done, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying it's one thing if they're young. I'm just talking about when they're older, they should have things already done on their behalf, like a, a plot and all that. Even Abraham, he bought a plot with the cave, and then he was able to bury himself, his wife, his other, you know, whatever, for the cave that he bought. And this was way back in Genesis. Amen, that clock's wrong, unless it's 320, but praise God. But I'm just saying, this is wisdom, my clock says here. So this is wisdom. So here, we'll look at some other things. Go here, I'll show you. Because in, um, watch this, go to, let's go to, uh, right here, at Exodus 28. I want you to see something. Exodus 28. I like this chapter. Where am I? I said that. All right. Exodus 28. So it says right here, this is when Moses went in the wilderness. They took the children of Israel. So they got all this gold. They got stuff from the people when they left captivity. And they took a lot of stuff with them. 
And so now he's to God, he went up into the mount for 40 days, 40 nights. God told him what the design, the blueprint that he got from heaven. He showed him the tabernacle in heaven. He wanted to design it like that. So he got an up close personal view, you know, of how heaven was and how he wanted, God wanted him to build a tabernacle for him. So it says in, in Exodus 28, he said, and take thou the brother unto the Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with them from among, what? The children of Israel. And he said, what? That he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar, Aaron's son. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for the glory and for the beauty. And so he goes on and he talks about how to make things and what they're supposed to do. And he was telling them how to put things in order and everything. And he says here, let me go. Did I say Exodus 28? Mm -hmm. Whoops. Okay. So he said, I think I meant to put, uh, yeah. So he says here, let me find that real quick. Verse 3. Yeah. And so he said, and thou shalt speak, what? Verse 3. Unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garment to consecrate him, and that he may minister unto me in what? The priest office. So he took someone to be able to be filled with wisdom to be able to make that. And I want you to see who he actually uh, went and did, who he filled with wisdom. It's right here in Acts Exodus 31, watch this for time's sake. And it says right here in verse 31, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, See, I have called you by name Bezaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. See, this is the Lord speaking. He knows our name. He knows where a family we came from, our relatives and all that. He don't forget that. You see how he called them. And I filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in the knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to do what? To devise cunning works, to work in gold and silver and brass and cutting of stones and set them and in carving of timber and work of all manner of workmanship. And behold, I have given with him a holab the son of Ahazmiach, of the tribe of Dan, in the heart and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I'll put wisdom that they may all make all that I have commanded thee. See, that's not the gift of wisdom as far as that. He's given them wisdom he imparted to them to be able to design specific things for the kingdom of God. See, that's, a, that, that's wisdom from God that they didn't know how to make all that, but he downloaded wisdom to them so he can make all these things, garments, the veil, the tents, and, and he even assigned them the gold, all the things that he needed to do to make the ark and the covenant and the tents and all that and the garments and everything. That's him giving people wisdom. God, when you come to the Lord, he'll download wisdom for whatever you're called to do. Amen. So you'll be able to know how to handle things and do things. Amen. Amen. If it's supposed to be today with modern technology, he can give it to you to know how to do it. Amen. All you got to do is ask him. And if he puts you in the call, he'll know, he'll give you. There's a lot of things I never knew how to do. I just stepped out and believed him to do it. That when I go in it, he'll quit me for it unless he tells me don't do it. Amen. But there's different jobs I've had. I didn't know how to do it, but God gave me the wisdom how to do it. Does that mean it just came to me like boom, or did I have to learn too? Some things I learned, but he gave me the simplicity of how to do it. Amen? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you do nothing, because obviously he gave them wisdom, but they had to put the wisdom to work. Amen? Mm -hmm. And they gave them understanding how to do it. Praise God. So he says here, I'll show you right here, um, in Acts... Uh, Exodus 35, so look at this. Again, he said here, it says, And Moses said, or I'll start at here in verse, 
actually 29. This is when, uh, I, actually I might want to start here. He said, verse 4, And Moses spoke unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take you among you an offering unto the Lord, whose ever heart, whose, uh, whosoever heart is is of a willing heart let him bring it a offering of the lord gold silver and this was all the different things they had to bring to him so it's a whole list and right here it says verse 29 the children of israel brought a willing offering unto the lord every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner the work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. So he asked them, and then he put the willingness in their heart to do it. Amen. And then it says, And Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, Bezalel, Bez, excuse me, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the spirit of God and wisdom and understanding and knowledge in all manner of workmanship. And so he had did this to devise all these things that he's done. Yeah, again, he said the same thing as far as he gave him this. Amen? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking, you're on a job. God will give you the wisdom and know how to do things. Amen? Mm -hmm. Whatever position you do, if God assigns you in a position, he'll equip you with the wisdom. Amen? Mm -hmm. So whatever position he assigns you in, he'll give you the wisdom. Amen? To be able to use, do it. Praise God and the understanding. Amen? Mm -hmm. So look at here. Go to the book of Acts real quick. Sorry, taking a little long here. Acts 26. Man, I want to get it. Time's going, but whew, there's a lot more I want to cover. But it says here, praise God, Acts 26. It says in verse right here, uh, this was a time I got to kind of briefly say that uh, in verse 1, it said, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered him, and what? For himself. And he said, I think myself happy. See? He's like, man, I'm thinking myself happy here. He said, I get to speak. He said, King Agrippa, see, he was talking before the king. He said, because I shall answer for myself this day before you, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. And then he started sharing with them about how he came to the Lord, how the Lord called him, how he was knocked off a horse, and the Lord called him, and what things the Lord told him he was going to do, and how he would be persecuted, and how he was a minister for the Lord, and what he was going to go through. And he said right here, I'll, I'll just drop down to verse 17. He said, delivering you, this is talking about Paul, what the Lord told him. I'm all, he's going, I'll, I'll read verse 16. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I've appeared unto you for this purpose. This is when the Lord knocked him off his high horse, you know. That's where he had w wisdom of the world, and he was persecuting the church, and then the Lord knocked him off. He was literally on a horse, but he knocked him off his high horse right on his humbleness, his blessed assurance. Amen. So it said right here, and he said, For I appeared unto you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of these things which you have seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I have said, sent thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may what? Receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified or set about by faith that is in me. Wherefore, verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea that they should... that and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do the works fit or, remit, or fit or met for repentance. For this cause the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me, having what? 
Therefore, obtain help of God. I continue both this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those things which the prophets and Moses said should come, that Christ should suffer, that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and he should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spoke for himself, talking about Paul, Festus, this was the attorney, said on with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. You see, he's talking about, man, you, you, you need to calm down. You're beside yourself. Much learning does make you mad. See, he was so full. He had so much wisdom that he, he said it, it's made you mad, crazy. All this learning, all this thing is talking because this is the wisdom of the world that it's foolishness with them. So he's talking about you're beside yourself. Yeah, well, because I'm not in myself doing it. I'm doing it unto the Lord speaking as he's given me the wisdom to speak of what happened. And he was testifying. So some people, some th people will think what you say might be crazy. But see, it's the wisdom of God and out of the world. Amen. And so the king, he said, verse 26 verse 25 paul said i am not mad most noble festus but i speak forth the words of truth and soberness for the king knoweth these things before whom also i speak freely for i am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him for this thing was not done in a corner it wasn't done in secret That's right. you know about what happened to jesus yeah. and then what would paul would king agrippa he said, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know you believe us. Mm -hmm. And he said, then Agrippa said, Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. See, that's the king saying that in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. He said, you almost persuaded me from being a, uh, being a Christian. You know, and, and Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all them that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except in prison or in bonds. Mm -hmm. So that's the wisdom. He said, I would have all of you be as I am, right. knowing Christ and what I know. Mm -hmm. Amen. Except being in prison that I'm in these chains because he was preaching while he was in prison. Mm -hmm. But look at what he did through the wisdom of God. He almost persuade the king to be a changed amen because they people know when you speak of truth amen. Amen. amen and so this is wisdom from god so look at this let's go i might just finish it here in how, how to handle godly wisdom because if we look at it we're going to look at another thing man do i have time well i think i do how much i got on this video huh an hour I'll share another. I'm going to just drop down because I want to share this and then we'll talk a little bit. But this is godly wisdom versus worldly wisdom. But I'm going to talk about the gift of wisdom. I want to just share a few things about that because people got to know that we're talking about four different things. There's the demonic wisdom. There's natural wisdom. There's godly wisdom. And the last one is, is, is gift of wisdom. Now, gift of wisdom is a word from God that's going to foretell something that would happen. Mm -hmm. It's in part. It's not knowing everything, but you know in part what will happen. And that goes, it goes with also prophecy. Because prophecy is foretelling something that's going to happen, but it's with a word of wisdom to tell specifically what's going to happen in your life. You know, prophecy is a foretelling of something, but God, wisdom is in, it's a, it's a word in part for a person amen or about a pro about a thing that's going to happen amen in their life so we're going to look at a few of them as far as here about a gift of wisdom because this is from god amen the godly wisdom we'll look at in how to receive it the gift of wisdom you got to seek after god amen for it mm -hmm. amen godly wisdom he want to give us all of it just like We'll, we'll look at a few things with that when we finish it up. But I'm going to share a few things. We'll go to uh, 2 Kings chapter 8. I want you to see some things here.
And I probably won't finish it today, but I'll finish yeah. it next Thursday okay. for sure. Okay. But 2 Kings chapter 8. <clears throat> says here in verse 7 so all the time I'm going to say when God gives a word a gift of wisdom it, it is a, you know it's usually the gift of wisdom may say something I'm not saying it's always going to be the right thing or the greatest thing that they want to hear all the time you know but it's always to help someone. It's either to change someone to repent, amen, because miracles draw people to God, amen. But if people think, oh, well, I can't just repent, I'll just take what there is and that's it, you know. Like usually it's to turn them from what they want to do. But here it says, Elijah came to Damascus and Ben-Hadadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, the man of God has come hither. And the king said unto Haziel, Take a present, and what? And go and meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? So Haziel went to meet him, and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus. Now, these are Syrians. They weren't all for Israel. Now, you look at, he's taking people that are against them to go meet a prophet. Amen? And it says, take what? Every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels, burden, and come and take and stood before him and say, Thy son ben dad king of Syria, has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover this disease? Look at this. He took 40 camels full of things on him to give to the man of God. So don't think everyone's just like, oh, they're all broken and everything. This was a king coming, and what's it to him? He's king Syria, you know, and what did he do? He told him, bring all this when you go to him and tell him, shall I recover this sickness? Because he heard about him. You know, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He heard a rumor about Elijah. So what Elijah? Elijah said what? Right here. Elijah said unto him, Go and say unto the king, Thou mayest certainly recover. How be it the Lord has showed me that he shall surely die. So he said he's going to recover. So this is word of wisdom, but he's going to die. And he's going to tell him how he's going to die. He said right here, And Haziel said, Why weepeth thou? Why weepeth, my Lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds will you set on fire, and their young men will you slay with the sword, and will dash their children and rip up their women with children. You know, they did that in Africa. When they had the uh, Rwanda and all that, and people don't know. I'm saying when they killed people, they would go up. When we talked about this is what he's saying. They would take pregnant women and rip up their thing and th the children would die. That's how they're saying this was. We're just reading it, but really knowing what he was going to do. This is how evil this guy was. And he's, he don't even know what he's doing. He's telling them what he sees he's going to do. That's a word of wisdom. And Haziel said, But what, is thy servant a dog? He ain't even thinking this is what he's going to do. And he said that he should do this great thing. And Elijah answered, The Lord has showed me that thou shalt be king over Assyria. So he departed from Elijah and came to his master and said to him, What saith Elijah to me? And he said, He told me that thou shouldest recover. And look at what happened. And it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, that he took a thick cloth, dipped it in water, and what? He spread it on his face so he died. And Haziel reigned in his stead. So the thing he told him that he was going to do, he did. He said, you should surely die. He didn't tell him how he was going to die, but he took a piece of wet cloth and, you know, where you choke them, where you cover their face to this is almost like water boring, but he took it and he put it over him so he couldn't breathe. But that was a word of wisdom. And what he did, he said, he did the same thing, even though he couldn't even see it himself. But he ended up fulfilling what was said. That's a, that's a gift of, 
a gift of wisdom, but prophet, prophecy in part. I'm not saying all of it's always bad like that, but it's a word of wisdom. Some things are good. Amen. There is good things. I'll show you. But here is another word as far as of wisdom right here. And uh, go to here, Genesis 15. This is Abraham. So he, God can show you things afar off before you're even there. Amen. That's a word of wisdom and prophecy. But it says right here in Genesis 15, it says this is where God made a covenant with them. And he told them to take some goats and rams and turtle doves, three years old and a pigeon. And he told them to divide it. And the Lord showed up in a dark cloud and fire and went through it and made a covenant that he swore by himself what he would do for Abraham. And then he says right here, he said unto verse 13, verse 12, and when the sun was gone down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed, he didn't even have children yet, he said, Of thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall be afflicted them four hundred years. Mm -hmm. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go be in thy, to thy fathers in peace. And they shall bury you in a good old age. And then he said, But in the fourth generation thou shalt come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So he gave him a word about what was going to happen with the seed, how he was going to pass, but in a good old age and in peace. So God could tell you about things of your own life, about things that may happen about your children, and he'll, he'll show you and he'll give you wisdom about it. Amen? Amen. So that's a gift of wisdom because he's already telling them things and showing them things before they even happen. It's prophecy, but it's with the word of wisdom. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll share another one, praise God, and then we'll get the closing here. Praise God. Let me just go here. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9. Ooh. No, let me go to this one in Luke chapter 21. And there's a lot more. Like if you go to the book of uh, Acts, <laughs> Abigail the prophet, Abigail, he prophesied that there would be a great drought that was going to happen among the whole earth. Mm -hmm. And it happened. And it's recorded in history. Mm -hmm. But it's in the book of Acts. He prophesied that a great drought would happen throughout the whole earth. That's a word of wisdom with prophecy. Because he's telling them what's going to happen. He didn't give them exactly when. Because usually a word of wisdom comes when, you know, when it was going to happen. That came the next day. You know, and I've had it happen before. Like, you know, God told me, uh, I, the brother that was next to me, and I've shared it before. He told me, yeah, I, it just came to me. I said, tomorrow you're going to get some money in the mail. And uh, sure enough, an uh, envelope came when he got his mail, and it showed that he had to deposit put in his account. <laughs> this was back before they had phones and all that stuff, you know. We had to write letters, physical letters, not texting. You had to write by hand, you know, when you wrote things, wrote cards. Not as send a card by email. We written, everything was written down. So, <laughs> so that's how you had to write. But he got a letter in the mail and it showed he, he got money. I was surprised myself. I was like, praise God, God. And he wasn't really going to church or nothing, but the Lord was showing him, giving him a word of wisdom because the gifts is draw the people to the Lord. Amen. But Luke 21, what does this say? And I, I could read more. But it says here, in Luke 21, and uh, is that what I said, Luke 21? Yeah. Luke, whoa, hold up. Yeah, Luke 21. It says right here, and verse 5, it said, And some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said. And then what did he tell them? He said, as for these things, he's showing them the temple. Oh, look how beautiful Solomon's temple is and everything. And Jesus looked at it and he said, Behold, the days come in which there shall not be left one 
stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Mm -hmm. So that happened in 70 AD when it was happening. But a, a word of wisdom, we'll, we'll go a little more in depth. This is more like prophecy, but it has the wisdom in it. We'll see, because a word of wisdom is showing something specific in part to the person of what's gonna happen, amen? It's a gift, and we'll go over more, and then we'll talk next week a little more about how to get wisdom, you know, and how we are to receive it, amen? Yeah. I, I can't get through it all tonight, but we'll, we'll speak on it next Thursday, and I, you know, because God wants us to have wisdom. He wants wisdom on our job, wisdom for our family, wisdom for what we're to do, amen, yeah. in things that we're doing, and he'll give it to us. All we need to do is really ask him for it. Yeah. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And so we'll we'll talk more because wow, there's so much I want to read, but amen. Yeah. There's a lot of things just going in my head right now, but praise God. I like talking about this, but we'll, we'll cover more of it uh, next week, amen. Praise God, but we'll pray, amen. I, I was sensing... I'm sensing like while I'm talking to someone's heart, amen. It's like a heaviness, even their spirit. And I just want to pray because it's like someone's spirit's hurting. I could sense it when we were starting, amen. And I'm just going to pray for this right now. Father, Father I, we, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. It's the goodness of you, Father God, that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of you, Father, that endure for, endureth continually. You love us with an everlasting love, and you draw us by your loving kindness because you are good all the time, Father. And right now, Lord, Father, I just lift up for those who may not know you or have known you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, you see their hurt. You see what they've been going through, Father God. And, and you know, I, I sense the, the heart. The heart's been heavy. Father God, I know you love them. And all the Lord's asking, if you just give it to him, you'll see a change, a change happen in your life. And the Lord just tells us, he says, come unto me, all you that are labor. You're working, are heavy laden, you're heavy burden. And he said, I'll give you rest. If you just come to me, you give it to me, he'll give you the rest so you can trust in him and rest and rely on him. And I know with every eye closed, every you know head bowed, if you know that's you, you, you can raise your hand and I'll pray for you. I'm not gonna call anyone out. I'm just saying if, if you know it's you, you just raise your hand and we'll, I'm gonna pray. Hallelujah. F Father, I, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. You see hands. You see the ones on the internet, Father God. I thank you right now, Lord. I pray for them in Jesus' name. You just say, and we can all say it, just say, Lord Jesus, I just come to you right now. And we could all say it together. I come to you right now. And I just give you all this care. I give you all this hurt. I ask you, Lord, to heal me, to take this pain away, and I give it to you now, Lord Jesus. Forgive me, and I ask you to just come into my life and change it in Jesus' name. Father, I just lift up those who have all prayed, Father God. Right now, I thank you, Lord, just coming into their life. Lord, I bind the hand of the enemy right now off of them. Whew, thank you, Jesus. I thank you for you working in their life right now to will and to do of your good pleasure. I thank you, Lord, for working in their life right now. And I thank you for changing their heart. I thank you for giving them a peace, hallelujah, that passes all their understanding. That that peace, they know you've got it in your hands and you're taking care of it right now. And I thank you no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And I thank you, Father God, for your perfect peace in their life. I thank you for healing them now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, heal in their heart. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, and give you all the glory. All the praise. Thank you. 
and all the honor for it, Father God, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you. I sense it's being done right now. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I thank you for your presence right now in their life. Lord, I rebuke the devil from off them and, re and I command them to leave and I thank you right now in Jesus' name, Father God, that you're gonna order their steps in your word and you're gonna make every crooked place straight, every rough road smooth in the name of Jesus. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor for it right in now. Name of Jesus. In Jesus' Hallelujah. precious name. Thank you, Jesus. I, I just want to pray for someone. I don't know, you have a, it's like a cover, like a cloth, like a, a thing, like a cloud. Like It's like a thick thing sitting on your on your face. Like, a, you know, it's, 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 it's just a heavy, just a spirit of heaviness that is sitting over your head. And on, like it covers, you feel it like it covers your eyes. In the name of Jesus, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I just want to take authority over that foul, unclean spirit of heaviness, Lord. I rebuke the spirit of witchcraft right now in Jesus' name. Devil, I command you to take your stinky hands off their head. In the name of Jesus, loose their eyes right now in Jesus' mighty name. I cancel your assignment right now, you foul, unclean spirit of witchcraft. I command you to loose right now and get off just come out of their eyes, come out of their head, in Jesus' mighty name, I take authority over you, Satan, loose it right now, and come out of them, in the name of Jesus, and I cast you to the pits of hell, Father God, I thank you that you said for the garment, for the, Father God, for the spirit of heaviness, you shall give us the spirit of, uh, Father God, the spirit of praise, the garment of praise, Father, we thank you for the garment of praise right now, Lord, we take authority over the spirit of heaviness, Lord, and Lord God, we put on the garment of praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for deliverance and healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, I cancel your assignment right now, devil. In the name of Jesus, take your stinky hands off them in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, we thank you for healing and deliverance right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. That you shake everything that is unlike God in Jesus' mighty name name hallelujah and I, I even see someone with something on the back you feel like it's it's like something sitting in the middle of the back I see something that is sitting on the middle of the back. It's like it's taunting. I rebuke that spirit right now. I bind you, devil, and I command you to loose their back in Jesus' mighty name. I speak deliverance and healing from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you strengthen and quicken their back right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Father. We thank you and we bless you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise and glory yes, and honor. And we ask you to preserve their soul. They're going in and they're coming out in the yes, name of Lord. Jesus. Watch thank over you, them, Jesus. cover yes, them. Lord. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. You, hallelujah. Jesus. In Jesus' precious hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God.